Hi everyone, thanks for watching today's video. Today I'm going to talk about a rare condition, however a very serious condition called acalculus cholecystitis. So what does acalculus cholecystitis mean? As you might remember in my last two videos when I was talking about inflammation of the gallbladder which is also called cholecystitis, I mentioned that the commonest cause is gallstones. However, in less than 5% patients who get inflammation of the gallbladder they do not have gallstones. So the explanation is in the name. So A means without, calculus means stones, cholecystitis means inflammation of the gallbladder. So inflammation of the gallbladder that happens in the absence of stones or gallstones is called acalculus cholecystitis. Like any other illness, some of these patients usually come to accident and emergency with a calculus cholecystitis being very unwell, septic, abdominal pain, etc., which we'll discuss in a minute. However, vast majority of these patients are already in the hospital. And where are they in the hospital? They are the sickest patients in the hospital. So they're usually on the intensive care units. So they might be either on a ventilation uh, machines which are uh, supporting their breathing, or they might be on multiple drugs to control their blood pressure, their breathing, etc., etc. So they are quite poorly patients. And these patients would have had previous quite major trauma. That's the reason why they are on intensive care unit, like head injury, multiple fractures on the limbs, uh, chest trauma, abdominal trauma, etc., severe burns, or they are septic from other causes like severe chest infection, perforated bowel, or whatever other cause they might be. They might have underlying heart failure or might have already had some surgery, especially heart surgery or aortic surgery. These patients are at a very high risk of developing acalculus cholecystitis. Many of these patients are also diabetics and poorly controlled diabetics, especially the patients who come through accident and emergency they are quite frequently are diabetics and they are more prone to developing a calculus cholecystitis as compared to people who are not diabetics. So what is the reason of developing a calculus cholecystitis in these sick patients or diabetics? There are two main theories behind it. Theory number one is that these patients are usually, as I said earlier, are on intensive care unit. Many of them are on a ventilator with a tube down their trachea breathing for them on a ventilator they are not able to eat or drink and they're usually fed through a vein with high nutrition food called tpn or total parenteral nutrition so their guts are not being used and as i explained in my previous video about function of the gallbladder one of the main function of the gallbladder is that when we eat or drink especially fatty food the gallbladder squeezes. So gallbladder between meals is dilated like this. And when we eat or drink, especially when we eat fatty food, the gallbladder squeezes and pushes all the bile into the intestine to help digest our fats. However, when the patient is not eating or drinking, the gallbladder is sitting like this, not squeezing at all or squeezing very mildly. So all the bile sitting in the gallbladder sits there and sometimes get infected. The important thing to note about a calculus cholecystitis, unlike calculus cholecystitis, which is inflammation of the gallbladder happening because of gallstones, a calculus cholecystitis does not always get infection in the gallbladder. In gallstone, Cholecystitis, most of the patients get infection in the gallbladder and a calculus cholecystitis. The problem happens because the gallbladder is not squeezing, the gallbladder continues to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And when a structure in the body goes big, bigger, it outgrows its blood supply. As we know, everything in our body is alive because blood going to it. Blood is the lifeline to every part of our body, whether it's our brain, heart, lungs, liver, kidneys, etc. Gallbladder is no exception. And gallbladder only survives because of blood going into the gallbladder. If 
the gallbladder becomes too big, then the blood supply does not increase with the size of the gallbladder. And there will be part of the gallbladder in which there won't be any blood going. And that part of the gallbladder will start losing its blood supply and start dying. Same thing happens in patients who are on ventilators, who have got multi multiple organ failure, who are in renal failure, who have severe lung problems. Their blood pressure is very low. So different parts of their body, whether it's their legs, their arms, their brain, their heart, everything is getting less blood than they normally require. And again, gallbladder is no exception. In these patients, there is not enough blood going into the gallbladder to keep it alive. And these patients are at a very high risk of developing acalculus cholecystitis. Next thing, how is acalculus cholecystitis diagnosed? If the patient is conscious, like as I explained earlier, they come through accident and emergencies, poorly controlled, insulin dependent diabetics usually, they have symptoms of inflammation of the gallbladder, which I discussed in my previous video that they have abdominal pain, especially on the right side under the rib cage, go straight through to their back between the shoulder blades. They have fever, they are looking very unwell. They, their blood tests are showing signs of infection like raise white blood count, raise C-reactive protein, etc., etc., abnormal liver function tests, etc. Then in those patients, Ultrasound scan is a reasonably straightforward diagnosis. Ultrasound will not show any gallstones, might show a very dilated gallbladder, very big gallbladder. A gallbladder which has got thick walls, gallbladder which has got fluid around it, or gallbladder which has got sludge rather than gallstones. And all these findings will point towards a calculus acute cholecystitis. The problem arises on patients who are on a ventilator because these patients are unconscious. And these patients, because they are on strong sedatives or general anesthetic drugs to keep them on a ventilator, they cannot complain of abdominal pain. These patients are already very sick and septic, so they already have a fever. They already have a tummy which is swollen because of fluid in the tummy. Diagnosing these is far more challenging because these patients cannot complain of abdominal pain and the clinicians have to be very vigilant to make a diagnosis. Both type of these patients, if they are very sick and septic, the best way of diagnosing is an ultrasound scan. Even on intensive care unit, an ultrasound scan can be performed very easily. And one of the most easiest way of confirming a calculus cholecystitis. CT scan can also be performed and CT scan especially on intensive care unit patients when cause of sepsis is unknown or they are getting worse or their liver functions are getting worse or their septic markers are getting worse then CT scanning them a calculus cholecystitis can be picked up. There are uncommon scans like HIDA scan they are not very sensitive in these sick patients and are not always used for the diagnosis of acalculus cholecystitis. So two most important things. First of all, high vigilance about the possibility of acalculus cholecystitis. Number two, the good use of ultrasound scan on time and sometimes repeated ultrasound scan if the first one is not diagnostic or is equivocal about the diagnosis of acute cholecystitis and a CT scan. The most diagnostic sign on ultrasound and CT of acute acalculus cholecystitis is presence of gas or air bubbles in the wall or inside the gallbladder. If gas is picked up in the gallbladder, which should not be there normally, then it is quite diagnostic of acute acalculus cholecystitis. And this can be picked up on ultrasound scan, especially done by a good ultrasonographer, and certainly much easier to pick up on a CT scan. So what is the main complication of a calculus cholecystitis? The most serious complication, which can happen quite frequently, is perforation of the gallbladder. As I explained um, earlier, that gallbladder distends, distends, distends. When it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, it loses blood supply. Patients' blood pressure is still quite low, and they can't 
keep up with the distension of the gallbladder, their blood flow can't increase and eventually the gallbladder will outgrow its blood supply and the wall of the gallbladder will perforate because it dies. And as a result, the bile and all the mucus or even sometimes the infection in the gallbladder, if it's infected, will come out into the tummy and will cause peritonitis, which is a very serious condition to get. And the death rate on these patients, because they're already quite sick and septic or intensive care units, is very, very high. So once the diagnosis has been made, what is the treatment of acalculus cholecystitis? Most of these patients will already be on antibiotics because they are quite sick and septic. If not, then probably will require antibiotics. However, the main treatment, once it's diagnosed, is drainage of the gallbladder. So the radiologist or the x-ray doctor under ultrasound, when they're scanning the abdomen with the ultrasound, they can put a little tube into the gallbladder to drain the gallbladder out. So instead of gallbladder being very distended, losing its blood supply, when the tube goes into the gallbladder and the bile is drained outside the, with the, outside with the tube, the gallbladder becomes smaller and the tube can be left in there for a few days or a few weeks until the patient's condition improves. These patients don't always require the gallbladder to be removed in the future, the tube can be removed. And once they're eating and drinking or their gut is being used, gallbladder starts functioning normally. If the gallbladder has perforated and the patient has got, is developing peritonitis or already has peritonitis or they're not improving by drainage of the gallbladder, then they will require surgery to remove the gallbladder called cholecystectomy. These patients are very, very sick patients. The chance of dying from these operations is very high. I hope you did find this video informative and know a bit more about acalculus cholecystitis. If you have any questions, please feel free to write in the comments. I'll be very happy to try and answer your questions if I can. Thank you again for watching. Please remember to support our channel by subscribing and clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching.